Hi, and welcome back. Let's take a quick look at Central America, the United States Backyard War by Victory Games in 1987. The game was designed by James H. McQuaid, and it was developed by Mark Herman and Michael E. Moore. Central America is a detailed simulation of past and possible future conflicts in the Central American region. The game is designed to model the complex interaction of air and ground combat on the modern battlefield as it was at that time. Let's take a look at the game components. The game comes with 780 half inch die cut cardboard counters with a glossy finish. On each counter is presented the various data needed to play. One 22 inch by 32 inch unmounted full color map sheet with a matte finish overlaid with a hexagonal grid. Various play aids and charts and tables are printed around the periphery of the game map such as the game turn track, the phase track, various off-board holding boxes, and the combat results table. And the terrain effects chart up at the top, combat results table here, and we have air combat and intensity of air combat tables there. The map is oriented orientated at the moment to where the top of the map as you're viewing it is Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, down here is Costa Rica, and over here is Managua to give you an idea of some of the geographical locations on the map. The game includes two world booklets, one 64 pages and one 40 pages. The upper left hand rule book contains all the rules you need to play the conventional game and the one in the lower right consists of the intervention game rules which add uh, optional and advanced rules to the game such as intervention air rules, United States involvement, intervention ground rules, political considerations, a series of optional rules, and stuff like that. There's also a random generator for a campaign game included in the rules. So you can play the game many, many times. Um, with different parameters. The forces. game also comes with one 68 page scenario booklet. Some of the scenarios include the soccer war, the fall of Samosa, civil war in El Salvador, the Contra Drive, um, let's see, the 1979 revolution, the Christmas war, and then the scenario generation system. But it also, I mean, those are just a few of the samples and stuff. And these are your orders of battle for the different scenarios. Listing setup, orders of battle, and victory conditions, and so forth. The game also includes two charts and tables booklets. One for the allied player and one for the communist player. They contain such things as insurgency command tables, air load transports, uh, stacking an air facility, uh, the, the air facility chart which indicates how many units can operate from various air facilities, unit load point chart, stacking point charts, some are slightly different for the Allied or the Communist player. Uh, we have terrain features that affect the bombardment table. We have the ground bombardment table here, various modifiers at the bottom. Over to the right we have air combat tables and the different intensity levels 
of the uh, air combat. Uh, let's see, to the right, lower right, we have the paradrop and, air, and helicopter assault table. On the left is the terrain effects chart, which lists all the um, terrain features in both the hex and the hex sides and their effects on movement and combat. And then on the lower right, we have a supply summary for all of the players in the game, or all the sides in the game. And what else does it have? Some of this is from the intervention rules, but we have like the weather table at the top, optional repair chart, and we have increase and decreases to world tension. And this game also includes the option for uh, the Soviets and the Americans to intervene and um, potentially create a third world war situation in Central America. We have the initial world tension, the doctrine matrix, which can be non-intervention, Monroe doctrine, aggressive support for the Allies, and for the communists, communists the non-intervention, Brezhnev doctrine, and adventurism. And then on the back, we have a record uh, for different the different cities that the communist player controls, and the other uh, the allied player charts and tables contain similar information. And finally, we come to the two player display cards. The green one is the allied player and the red one is the communist player, naturally. They contain uh, holding displays for the different air units and air groups. They have an information record track, and that's pretty much it. Um, your air units can be in the available box, the used box, or the sitting box. And each of these have an impact on which air units that you can have available at any one time. Well, I guess there was one other vital component needed to play, one six-sided die. The game scales two days per game turn, the map is 15 miles per hex, and the units are company to brigade sized formations. Number of players is two or more, Playing time, one to two hours for the introductory scenarios, three to five hours for the intermediate scenarios, and 10 to 20 hours for the campaign scenarios. The complexity level is very high. Solitaire suitability is medium. Game details. Component description. The map. The game map portrays the area over which the conflict did or could have occurred. A hexagonal grid has been superimposed over the terrain features on the map in order to regularize movement and the positioning of the playing pieces. Counters. The playing pieces represent the actual units which participated or could have participated in the actual conflict. Each unit has various types of information printed on it indicating their relative abilities or functions. The sequence of play. The sequence of play consists of the following stages and phases performed in the exact order listed. The communist ground and air stage, the supply phase, the ground unit reorganization phase, regular ground unit movement phase, insurgency movement phase, insurgency placement phase, allied aerial counterinsurgency phase, the first insurgency disbandment phase, an air mission phase, a ground combat phase, reserve movement phase, a second insurgency disbandment phase, helicopter transport phase, return to base phase, and a reinforcement phase. And the allied, and we have the allied ground and air phase, and it follows the same SOP as the communist players. And at the end we have an end of turn stage, 
Unless either player wins the game by achieving the scenario's victory conditions, both players perform various and both players perform various administrative tasks and prepare for the next turn. And this will conclude our brief look at Central America, the United States Backyard War by Victory Games, 1987. Thank you.